good evening, everybody. I hope you're all well. Hope you're all keeping safe. Hope you're all keeping uh, busy. Hope you're all studying hard as well. So for those who don't know, my name is uh, Nick Craggs. I am AT Distance Learning Director at First Intuition, and I'm also AT Tutor of the Year currently. Um, so tonight, we want to talk about Advanced Synoptic, or ADSY, the new uh, acronym is, uh, because it's not a coincidence, it is Synoptic Week next week. The new, uh, the new first sitting of the new Synoptic exam. So what I'm going to do is go through and talk about, um, you know, the history behind it, what it's all about, and basically what you need to do to pass the exam. Um, what I've got here, a um, couple of things. If you want to get yourself a first intuition hoodie, make sure you like our first uh, Facebook page because why wouldn't you? And also, there's loads of stuff on there. Get yourself a um, Facebook uh, first intuition mug. Cracking stuff. Uh, I will be giving out a mug tonight. I am quite generous when it comes to mugs because someone else sends them out. Thanks, Emily. Um, so you could say hi, give us a like uh, tonight. And anyone who makes me laugh or asks quite a good question will win a mug. Might need about two, feeling how generous I think Emily's got a new delivery. Cool, so um, just before I've got you, shameless plug, not gonna lie, 20% um, off our online live, online, uh, whole level bookkeeping and individual unit courses, can't say fairer than that. Uh, Becky, you get a mug for making me laugh. You can ask a sensible question, but making me laugh goes a lot further. Um, Sammy Joe, yes, we will be talking about spreadsheets and how that can work as well, because we're gonna talk about that, because it's, it's relevant, because it's, the history of Synoptic, if you like, if you like that sort of thing. Um, what else we've got to plug? Yes, if you've got our mock product, £15 per unit, including Synoptic, you get online mocks, with, it's fully marked, um, you, you can put, you mark your own written stuff, and then you get a mark that takes into account the entire uh, mark, uh, mock, not just like the AT ones where they ignore the written stuff, £50 per unit, you've still got time to get benefit of it from uh, Advanced Synoptic. Cool, so, uh, hi everyone, everyone's saying hi, there's loads of you tonight, Advanced Synoptic. So, let's go through the history of AAT. It, 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 uh, it's only sad I was like being a little excited, but many years ago, like many years ago, uh, in 2013, AAT brought in AQ 2013, and there was a spreadsheet unit, and there was an ethics unit. And then we came to AQ 2016, and AAT needed a summative assessment, so that's two to talk for, do you know everything, basically? Uh, and it tested on anything that came up at level three. <laughs> you can imagine, it was a hard exam. It was a very hard exam. And there were some teething uh, issues with it um, in terms of, it was just really hard. Um, and so to make it a little bit easier, AET took indirect tax out of uh, advanced synoptic um, and didn't make it any easier, let's be honest. And then it went from, four tasks of ethics and three tasks of spreadsheets to three tasks of ethics and two uh, tasks of spreadsheets. Uh, Laurie, drop me an email at nickcrags at fi.co.uk and I'll sort you out. It, there will be an email in junk somewhere, don't worry about that. So then we had Advanced Synoptic and it was three tasks of ethics, two tasks of spreadsheets, as well as testing anything from advanced bookkeeping, final accounts preparation, and management and costing. And then March 2020 happened and the world lost its stuff. Um, and there were issues. And then there was all talk about remote invigilation. And remote invigilation, uh, you know, it, it is a great thing. And AAT did eventually launch remote invigilation for like, I think it was like, back in the day, it was booking transactions, MMAC and BKCL was on the trial because I was involved with the trial. Now they've just rolled it out to most units at level two and three. Now we've got UX. And the issue with doing remote invigilation with advanced synoptic is, is the spreadsheet bit. Because when you download spreadsheets on your computer, it can get into the wild. And you could send it to your mate, not that any of you would, because you're obviously honest accountants and bound by a code of ethics. But as soon as that spreadsheet gets out in the wild, it questions the whole validity of the exam. So the spreadsheets was always the issue about remote invigilation. But synoptic is quite an important uh, exam because it's, you, know, you need to pass it. Um, and it's also got the issue with the synoptic window. So if you could get remote invigilation, it frees up capacity for people to sit their exams. So in a, an effort, and this is what it is, it is an effort to get remote invigilation. AAT have taken spreadsheets out of the advanced synoptic exam. 
Um, and so that's in its own separate exam, which we will talk about later. Um, so that left Advancing Optic, which doesn't have any spreadsheets in it. So there's no upload or download of spreadsheets. So it can be sat with remote invigilation. And next week is the first time you can sit it under the new system with um, a remote invigilation if you want to. You can still sit in an exam centre if you want to. But obviously it was half of a three hour exam. So to have quite an important exam, remember it's still worth 35% of your old grade, um, to be only worth an hour and a half when like AVB case two, a bit crazy. So what they've done, they've bulked up the advanced synoptic exam, uh, the first part of it basically. So task 1.1 and 1.2 haven't really changed. Uh, task 1.3, which is a written task on ethics, it's effectively been rebadged as task 1.4. We've got a new 1.3 and a new 1.5, 1.6. I'll go through what each one entails. Um, so, you know, so basically there's just more of what you previously had to learn. Now, I've got asked this quite a lot about, you know, what does it mean for me? What does it mean to me? Uh, in terms of what you need to learn, nothing. The learning outcomes in ethics and spreadsheets are exactly the same, exactly the same. So what you need to learn for ethics hasn't changed. What you need to learn for spreadsheets hasn't changed. So if any first intuition student bought a textbook off us a year ago before anyone even heard of these changes, the textbook is still fine. The course notes and question banks, what you need to learn about ethics and what you learn about spreadsheets is exactly the same. It's just the format of the exam. So advanced synoptic is now a two and a half hour exam and it is, uh, so that's 150 minutes, and there are 80 marks. So my rough maths mean, uh, means it's like two minutes per mark is the sort of guide you're spending on each one. Uh, just shot off. Um, so you know, the danger with these written questions, you think if I write another point, I'll get another mark. And you won't, um, unless your first few points were rubbish and they've got no marks. Uh, because say it's a two mark question, you're spending four minutes on that. And after you, you keep writing and writing and writing, you've got your, your two marks, you will not get any more. So be very, very careful with your time. Because I've got some bad news for you, which I'll come to when we come through it, uh, about written questions. So a bit of a disadvantage sitting uh, this window, because there's no sample assessment and mark scheme, which I think is really, really useful. And there's no chief examiner's report because, um, because no one sat the exam before at all. Uh, Hello everyone, I'm getting loads of hellos. So, all you've got, you've got me, I suppose. We in it. Um, so, you've got, um, you've got mocks and things like that, but the content has not changed. I cannot stress that enough. Um, Denise has asked a very good question about order. I'm going to come to that. I've got, I've got a plan that I told A18, so that's a great idea. And I thought, like, you know. Um, so, the exam, what have we got? We've got 1.1, it's about ethics. That's what it was before, it's not really changed. Then you've got 1.2. It's mainly ethics, but there's a bit of like the core subjects in there, mainly AVBK. Now, the big change, you're not gonna like, let's be honest, 1.3, the new task, is a written question. And you know, like, you know, 1.3 originally was a written question, but it was a written question on ethics. 1.3 is now a written question on the core units. We've never had that before. I'm not as excited about it as I sound. Uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. So you're going to have to explain in words, we're not looking for numbers. Because if we're looking for numbers, it'd just be an automatically marked task. But that's why, not why we're paying, uh, well, I'm not. That's why A18 are not paying human markers. We are looking for words. And you have to explain concepts such as net present value or depreciation or how would you deal with bad debt. And don't just go, this is the bad debt provision. It's what is it? What is it meant to do? And how would you do it? Explaining it to a non-accountant, should we say. So a tip for there is try and explain to your long suffering partner, mother, child, brother, dog, um, an accounting concept to them if they're not accountants, because that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to explain very briefly, but an accounting concept to someone who's not an accountant. It's something new having to explain like accruals and payments. What do they do? How do you do it? We're not looking for essays, but you've, you've got to do that for, which you've never had to do. Then you've got task 1.4, which is effectively 1.3 moved. Um, and it's basically a written question on ethics, uh, but within there, you've got some core subjects like AVBK, FAPI and costing. Then you've got 1.5 and 1.6, which are the new tasks. 
and 1.5 is is costing and literally it's like someone's just picked up a costing question and stuck it on the end it's it's it's, it's a big cost purely costing question so it's like do an mpv do an mpv and there's like no ethics involved there's no mvk and it's as big as you would expect in like the costing exam and then you've got 1.6 which is uh, a purely avuk or fapr question um you've got lots uh you know it, it is literally like it's taken from the avuk or fapr exam it's not changed in any way so you for example you could get just a huge etb it, it's 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 pure avuk and fapr it's pure financial accounting so that's the structure it's basically more of the same but the difference is you've got that written question in 1.3 about one of the core units which we've just never had before it's not an essay it's not ours but it, you know you've only got six tasks you can't really afford to have a bit of a, a dicky task uh, if you're looking to get you know a good mark so um i stress that's the only thing i'd do differently is look at written questions for the mandatory units now in terms of tips generally the main thing is you've got to remember ethics comes an awful lot because it's never been tested before in any of the other units although slightly it comes up very very so slightly in the three mandatory units but not to the nth degree and we have there's an awful lot of things that are really really key and i will i guarantee you can say nick craggs told me and it's going to be an exam money laundering is going to be a new exam it's such an important subject you really need to be clued up on money laundering because if you read the aat magazine which i keep up there first page i open naughty pages the disciplinary pages and in there everyone all the well sometimes you get a good one sometimes they've done something a bit crazy or left field but 90 percent of the people in the discipline pages is because of money laundering or not operating with a practice license really really important money laundering is key and the other thing is if, if there's anything you need to learn is the five principles and the threats because they, they are absolutely fundamental you know the fundamental principles um and whenever you do a question always always name drop drop so if your objectivity is under threat name the threat is it a self-interest threat is it an intimidation threat always name the threat uh, always name the principle in terms of principles uh, try not to use integrity integrity all the time integrity is you know we should be a good upstanding accountant but and doing anything wrong goes against your integrity yeah um but it's, it's, it's a bit generic so if someone's offering you um some football tickets if you do something for them and you accept them yes it's against your activity but more importantly they're it's affecting your objectivity likewise if you leave some confidential papers on the train yes it affects integrity but more importantly what we get now is confidentiality now these themes haven't changed from the old sitting it is exactly what we've done before but there's just more of it now now one thing i get asked an awful lot is this exam easier than the other one well i don't know because no one's ever sat it and aat are very keen to stress that the learning outcomes are the same which they are however i personally can't help but feel that if everything because in the old exam you need to know everything from avbk everything from fapr everything from maac and ethics and spreadsheets all at one point if you take away a, boy, a big chunk of what you need to know at that one point in time i can't tell feeling it's going to be a little bit easier i might not i might be wrong don't don't quote nick, nick craggs on that one uh but i think it might be a little bit easier so that's that um i'm going to move on to spreadsheets because it's not related to advanced synology, but it, it is i'm going to say why it's your your next step and how it relates so spreadsheets has been pulled away into a separate exam and um it is still an exam you still have to pass that exam now it doesn't count towards your overall grade so it doesn't affect whether you get a distinction or merit or anything exciting like that um but it, you if you don't pass it you will um you won't get your qualification simple as that really uh if you find it useful give us a like Just give us a comment say hi and don't forget if anyone makes me laugh i will go through the comments if anyone makes me laugh uh, you'll get yourself the first intuition mug so spreadsheet so spreadsheet's been moved away into its own exam and because it's not part of a synoptic exam it 
um, doesn't test you on anything from ABUK, FAPR, or cost or anything like that. It's pure spreadsheets. So it could well be, and if this is in your exam next week, I'm literally, it's a coincidence because I've not seen your exam, it could be like a whole load of data of girls' heights from primary school, uh, nothing to do with accountancy, and it's like, can you use a spreadsheet to find the average of them? or the most common height or something like that. It's not about doing a profit appropriation account in a spreadsheet like it was previously. So you don't need to have your AVBK, FAPR and MAVC knowledge to sit that exam. So in terms of uh, someone's question, I've got so many questions. Uh, in terms of order, you could do that first. Now, what I would suggest is you don't because you've got to wait six weeks for your results. Uh, and most people here, I imagine, I've already done ABK, FAPR and MAC because you're probably sitting in Thermo Optic next week. So for those people who've done that, the order I'd suggest you do it is your three mandatory, which I assume you've done because you're here, uh, or you're just interested in keen, which is also cool. Uh, do Synoptic and you've got to wait six weeks for results for Synoptic. Then you've got to wait, do your spreadsheets exam and wait six weeks for your spreadsheets results to come through. And whilst you're waiting for your six weeks for your spreadsheets results to come through, sit in direct tax, which does only normally take about six weeks. Um, and then that's the one where you get your exam result straight away. So when you get your exam result for indirect tax straight away, it's nigh on the time that your, your spreadsheets results were coming through. One last thing, one last thing, and I'll get good questions. Um, spreadsheets, how, we, how is that assessed? Now we know advancing optic can be sat in center or under RI. And remember, RI works that you've got to have a, a webcam. Um, you've got to have, I was going to say, a background with no books in, um, not any books. You've got to have a completely empty room. You're not allowed bits of paper all over your desk. Um, it's got to be a pretty sterile environment. But we've had lots of students do it, and it's gone well. You can't sit uh, spreadsheets under remote invigilation. It's not available. So there's, but there are some more options available. You can sit in an exam centre relatively straightforward. Also, it's a little bit cheaper because AT are not charging an exam fee for that. Because normally when you go to the exam centre, the charge of £100, say, roughly, the price has gone up, and 50 quid of that goes to AT, 50 quid goes to the exam centre. The first 50 quid is not going to AT. So I was speaking to AT today and they mentioned that one of the exam centres, a franchise that begins with P that won't mention, uh, they have said they are not charged, they're not, they are only charging a normal admin fee, about 50 quid. So it's a little bit cheaper. So you can sit in an exam centre, or the most straightforward thing is to do is sit at work. You can sit at work and a, either your manager or a member of a professional body, someone with certificates on the wall who's got something to lose, can invigilate you. And they've got to sign what's known as a declaration of authenticity to say that that work is your own. And then you sit at work. And for that, it'll be free. Or, or you can sit at home. So you can sit at home and... No one's invigilating you, uh, and you, you, but it's still a time of exam, and you've got to do it you know, in a certain time. But there's a lot more hoops to jump through, because your training provider would need to sign an off a certificate of authenticity. Now, at First Intuition, we've put our policies and procedures in place. It's a little bit different to doing any other um, like unit, because some like there's various things that... If you don't do, and you don't do right, you don't do properly, we can't sign that statement of authenticity. Being a bit coy about what we're doing, because not every training provider is offering this ability to sit at home. We are, uh, but we can do this. But it, 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 you've got to do it. You've got to do it right. You've got to follow instructions, but you can sit that exam at home. But it's still a proper exam. It still counts towards your overall grade. And if you don't do it, you'll not pass the exam. Cool, right, I have a billion questions and I'm gonna go through and see what have we got. Is it true that if we start level four in September next year, we'll not do synoptic? Now synoptics are going on Quals 2022, which occurs on the 1st of February, 2022, uh, except for level two. Level two still has a synoptic, but uh, level three and level four, they will not have a synoptic. So, uh, uh, Advanced Synoptic has been replaced at level three by uh, a unit called, well, it's not been replaced because it's not even a like for like. You don't get an exemption by the business um, awareness paper, which I think is a cracking paper. Brings in economics, brings in technology, like cloud data, like pestle analysis, you know, looking at all the political, 
uh, economical, social, technology, environmental, le legal issues. I think it's a cracking paper. It's not an synoptic paper. And so at level three and four, you can almost do them in any order. Um, and then at level four, professional synoptics have been replaced by what's known as INAC, uh, internal controls. Uh, it is, and it's, uh, I had a quick look at the sample assessment. Looks a lot easier than professional synoptic, the exam, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, you, you, if you start level four in September next year, you will not have to do synoptics. Uh, Amy, good luck for your ESIT. Uh, you see, yeah, if, you, if you're on AQ 2016, you still have to do synoptic. There's no two ways about that. You can't avoid it un unless you don't want to get your qualification. Um, you've still got to do it. How can you book in remote invigilators? Like I say, for, well, for, for advanced synoptic, um, contact your training provider about remote invigilation. They're the ones that set it up for you. Um, with spreadsheets, um, unless you're with first intuition, you've got to sit at an exam center or at work. Um, Laurie's actually sat the spreadsheets exam, said it was all right. Um, yeah, the spreadsheets exam, it's a bit like the old AQ 2013 spreadsheets exam that I knew and love. In the fact, it's just a test on spreadsheets. It's not a test on, you know, accounting knowledge. It's just, can you do a VLOOKUP? Can you do an IF statement? Can you do a graph that makes sense kind of thing? It's just pure spreadsheets, which I think is great. Uh, hi, Steph. Um, yeah, you can move over to the new syllabus. By the way, and it, it says it's like the land of milk and honey, avoiding synop synoptic. If you move over to the new syllabus, there's an awful lot to bear in mind. Yes, you avoid synoptic, but all your percentages will come across at seventy percent. You have to your student membership ends, so the hundred pound you pay every year then becomes a one-off fee. So if you're moving over on level three just to avoid synoptic, you're going to have to pay two hundred twenty pound to get onto level three. Sit synoptic. And then say two months later, pay two hundred and fifty pound to get onto level four. Your ninety pound, ninety nine pound, hundred pound annual subscription model is over on Qualls twenty two. And if you're not careful, you could lose some exam passes. Um, yeah, like you say, do I, I suggest do synoptic before spreadsheets because you don't really want a gap between studying advanced bookkeeping and then doing FAPR and then doing costing and then say indirect tax, then spreadsheets, and then coming to Synoptic and then go, oh, it's ages since I last studied AVBK. Uh, I've forgotten it. Why, you, I suggest, as long as you're not an apprentice, do AVBK, FAPR, costing, then advanced Synoptic, because all that first three, first three units are fresh in your mind, and then worry about indirect tax spreadsheets, which are very standalone. Um, yes, FIFO and LIFO, that's a really good question. So. FIFO and LIFO um, were literally the only things that weren't in the spreadsheets part of the exam for costing. So task 2.1 for the old advanced synoptic one was spreadsheets and it was literally everything from costing except for FIFO and LIFO. Doing FIFO and LIFO in a spreadsheet is an absolute nightmare, which is why it wasn't in. But now that's gone, FIFO and LIFO are probably more likely to rear its head than previously. So watch out for that. Um, do I know what sort of topics will come up with the written questions? No, literally all we, we've got is a sample assessments and in the sample assessments, I have seen written questions on AVBK, FAPR and MMAC, which kind of makes me think anything, unfortunately. Um, really? Uh, what else have we got? Uh, yeah, it's still 70% to pass. That hasn't changed and the learning outcomes haven't changed. Um, whereas, Spreadsheets, you don't get a percentage. It's competent or not yet competent. We don't say the word fail in AT. It's not yet competent. And it doesn't count towards your overall grade. Give us a like. Ask me a good question. Make a funny point. You'll probably, maybe, get yourself a uh, first intuition look. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a comment there about any units passed on AQ 2016 is not transferable on AQ 2022. That's not quite right let's talk about level three because most of you are, I assume are level three students so AVBK and FAPR have been replaced by a unit that's got the acronym of FAPS um, if you've only passed one of them you won't get exemption so FAPS is effectively AVBK and FAPR stuck together so if you pass AVBK and not FAPR 
If you move over, you've got to sit the massive FAPS unit, which also includes advanced bookkeeping. Now, if you've passed both of them, you will get the exemption from FAPS, be it at 70%. Now, costing on a, on Quals 22, the costing unit is nigh on the same as what it is on AQ2016. The issue is the costing unit also has some spreadsheets in. So unless you passed either spreadsheets on AQ2013, it's going back a while, or advanced synoptic, you can't get that exemption from the new costing unit because AAT can't say, yeah, that student's really good at costing and spreadsheets. You've got to have a pass in a spreadsheets-based exam, the old synoptic, and costing. So if you've only got passing costing and you move over and you haven't done advanced synoptic or the spreadsheets exam or the new spreadsheets exam, you'll lose that pass. Uh, advanced synoptic doesn't give you any exemption from the business awareness paper, indirect tax is indirect tax. Um, and likewise at level four, they will all, they'll all give you exemptions from the corresponding units at level four, you won't lose anything. The only difference is, a bit like at level three, both budgeting and decision control are both in a large management accounting costing paper uh, called AMAC. Um, and you've got to pass them both to get the exemption for that. So you only pass budgeting, but not decision control. When you move over, you effectively lose your passing budgeting and you've got to relearn budgeting and decision control to sit that massive paper. But so you most of them do carry over, but you just need to be careful. Uh, yeah, you can do spreadsheets at any level, uh, but typically I like to leave it at the end. Good evening, Emily. Now, the spreadsheet exam can be sat any point in time. It's not bound by a synoptic window. And, you know, a bit like RI exams, we, sh we schedule you for a 24 hour window. And then that's the period that you can start your exam. You can start it in time, but it's still an exam you should be doing to time. Uh, is the search bar available in the spreadsheet exam? Yep, it's, um, you can still use help and everything like that. Um, you should really, be in a position that you don't need to. Um, but yeah, it's, it is a exam that you would do in an exam conditions. You know, like a book or anything like that, that would be cheating. Cool, what else have we got? Loads and loads of questions. Uh, you spread it. Uh, da -da -da -da. <laughs> what do accountants suffer from the ordinary people though? Depreciation, that is a winner, almost. We'll see how the night goes, but that is a, almost a winner, Laurie. Uh, yeah, Kirsty said, spreadsheets for exam centre, £25. Uh, to be honest, if you can get an exam for £25, I'd suggest you sit at an exam centre. Um, you don't have to do any extra work or anything like that to, that you do would do if you sit at home. But I do appreciate that's not right for everyone. It's in a cruel world. How do you turn an asset into a liability? marry them <laughs> stole that one uh laurie's on form tonight yeah no even when it comes to june 2023 even if you haven't completed your level you will have to move over you will still keep any passes that correspond over however if you have exemptions on aq 2016 because you passed an exam on aq 2013 if you move over you will lose them so actually, if anybody's thinking, oh, the land of no synoptics move over, if you've got some exams passed in AQ 2013, don't do that. You will lose them. You can only jump from one standard to another. So if you've got stuff in 2013 that carried over 2016, you really, really need to complete on 2016, which you have all the time in the world for. It does not end until the end of June 2023, which is ages away. So don't worry about that. Um, yeah, and as Anne has correctly said, if you're an apprentice, on Quals 22, you still have to sit synoptic. Uh, yeah, there definitely is exemptions and transfers from 2016 to 2022. Not everyone, but there is definitely some. Uh, Lisa, you're exactly right. You've got to wait six weeks, six weeks for the result of your uh, advance, the new advanced synoptic exam to come through. That's not a change. And also got to wait six weeks for your results for spreadsheets to come through, which is why I say leave indirect tax to last, because then you've got something to be on with whilst you're waiting for your results to come through. Because you don't want to be in that awful no man's land of, I haven't got anything left to study, but I don't know I've completed my exams. Um, you may as well be studying that whilst you're waiting rather than just waiting, doing nothing. 
Kirsty got on the got on the wrong train. Done that. That is also a winner. Uh, why do skunks pay tax? They only have one cent. <laughs> shocking, shocking. Um, there's some good co good comments there. Um, those, yeah, actually, Alex made a very good point. Uh, if you you can actually sit them on both day, you do not have to sit them on the on the both on on to have to sit them both on the same day. I actually have got a student who is sitting on the same day next week. Good luck, Agnes. You'll smash it. Um, it can be done if you only want one trip to the exam centre. In an ideal world, you wouldn't because you've now got that advantage of not having to know all of AVK, FAPR, MAOC and ethics and spreadsheets all at the same time. But there's nothing to stop you. Uh, I think I've chosen my winners on my mugs. Uh, what happens if... Ah, no, there's someone's asked you, what happens if you pass the first part and not the second part? There is no second part in Advanced Synoptic now. It is task 1.1 to 1.6 it's just one exam and you have to get a 70% over all six tasks. So if you have a really good task 1.1 and uh, a rubbish 1.3, which is the written task on the AVK FAPR, don't worry, it's just 70% over the overall thing. There is not two halves of the exam. That spreadsheet has been moved over. Uh, other questions we've got. Yeah, you can also get exemptions from the spreadsheets exam from other qualifications if you've already passed them. Um, the first one that springs to mind uh, is the AQ 2013 spreadsheets exam. I thought, student asked, and I thought, yeah, they're not going to give an exemption for that. But they did. They did. I was surprised at that. Uh, <laughs> Laurie, that is my favourite. The three types of accountants. Those who can count and those who can't. I think Laurie's winning it tonight. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, exemptions and prior learning of spreadsheets. Um, uh, off the top of my head, I think things like City and Gills, um, that's one. All spreadsheets. Um, I can't think of any others off the top of my head, but there, there are other ones there. Now, recognised prior learning, uh, yeah, there's, there's a few on there. Actually, what I do, because it's not something that comes up very often, but it is possible. If, if you Google AAT, there is an, actually an exemption list and it lists out the unit you want the exemption for and what they'll accept. And there's quite a few on there. And it's like some of them are quite obscure. Um, you must be an accountant receivable because you're outstanding. <laughs> Shocking. Right, I'm going to make some names for mugs because uh, I'm loving this. All right. Okay, and there was one more. Who else? Who deserves a mug? Uh, someone else made me laugh. I think it was you. Yep. Yeah, uh, I've got some names. I'm not going to read them out in case I change my mind. So you've still got time. Uh, level three notes. Spreadsheet. No, 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 uh, Johnny. You've got to stick, you still, even though, if you've, if, say, say you've passed everything but advanced synoptic, no, you still got to sit synoptic and spreadsheets both. You can't just say, I'll do spreadsheets instead. It is both, both advanced synoptic and spreadsheets. Uh, Kirsty's asked a very good question, actually. How long does it take to study spreadsheets? Now, it's tricky because you, you as, as a tutor, you get people you like, this is a file, your file, save as. And then you get students who go, don't you know how to do a macro? I thought you were a tutor. Uh, and it's very, very open-ended. Uh, but if you use spreadsheets in the workplace, it really doesn't take that long to do. Now, when I worked in practice, I thought I was a bit of a whiz at spreadsheets. Turns out I wasn't. Uh, I knew very little. And when I came to teach AUT, there was various things that we didn't use, like data validation, uh, pivot tables. But it's just, it's not understanding a concept. It is just learning a formula and what it does. So it doesn't take very long if you've got a reasonable grounding in spreadsheets. An arbitrary figure, four weeks, six weeks kind of thing. It's not massive. It's And it, it's very much a doing type question. You can sit, you know, we have a whole suite of lectures that take you through everything for spreadsheets. But the secret of spreadsheets is, is really doing, doing something. Why doesn't your if statement work? You've got the three aspects of the if statement the test, what you want to do if it's correct, and what you want to do if it's not correct. 
get it right and figure it out and fix it kind of thing. Um, you know, it, it's just a case of playing with it and doing load, loads and loads of mocks. Um, Helen, very good question. Uh, do we get a peri pass merit or distinction with the new snobs? Yes, you do. So, the, the, actually, let's clarify. The pass merit distinction is for the level, not the exam. The pass merit distinction is for your overall level. And now, synoptic counts towards the overall level, a large part of it, but it's not the be-all and end-all. So you've still got AVBK and FAPR and everything that count towards it. Spreadsheets doesn't count towards it whatsoever, but it's still a mandatory part of the thing you have to pass it. So, it, it, synoptic still decides, you know, has a line share of deciding whether you get a pass merit distinction. But the distinction or whatever it is is on the level, not the exam. Uh, have the AAT changed the practice? Yes, AAT have changed the practice assessments on the website. Now, just be careful because um, I, I, I did prep this. I know it looks like I didn't, but I did prep this before I came on, and the uh, and I went to look on the old uh, website. The old sample assessments are still there, as are the new ones. I don't know why the old ones are still there. No one has any need for them because you physically can't sit the old spreadsheets, uh, the old synoptic exam. Be careful, as they're up there with the acronym AVSY. Don't use them because they're out of date. They're wrong, they've got spreadsheets in, they don't have enough tasks, they don't have a written task on the AVBK, FPI and costing. You wanna use the sample assessments for ADSY, which is the new one, uh, which is the six tasks. So just be careful of that. But then there isn't quite resources in terms of the examiner's report or the sample assessment and mark scheme with that. So, but there is the two um, sample assessments. Yeah, Lucy, very good question. You can do level four whilst you're still waiting for your synoptic results. I'll tell you what you can do as well, Lucy. You can buy level four whilst you're still waiting for your exam results and get 20% off and we'll support you for as long as you need. Uh, so if you wanted to get level four while you're waiting results or whatever, uh, you can buy a level four course from us, get 20%, start it when you're never, and we'll support you for as long as you need. That's a really good question. That did lead into a nice segue uh, of flogging some courses. Uh, yeah, Jill, the, six, the spreadsheet part is still a six week wait for results. Um, oh, Helen. Helen, you are going on my list. That is a cracker. I'm going to, have to read this one out. Um, a pivot table walks into the bar and orders a beer. It says, put me in the same tab, will you? <laughs> that is a cracker. Uh, cool. Uh, what else we got? That, that, that's an instant winner. I love that. Um, <laughs> in the couple of books. What else have we got? Uh, where are you? Cool. Right. Uh, so SP is set to Tuesday. Best advice to give to watch Aaron's... Oh, yeah. Laurie, great idea. Um, Laurie says the best advice is to watch Aaron's revision sessions from First Intuition's revision sessions. If you haven't signed up to our revision sessions, why not? They are free. They're open to everyone. Tell your mates. Tell your brother. And we've got them for uh, Advanced Synoptic. Um, get signed up. If you're sitting on Thursday, Friday, you still got time. Uh, I'm going to stick the link in the comments. Uh, make sure you get signed up for these. Uh, we're doing them for level four. If anyone moving on to level four, um, if I can actually find the bottom of the comments, because there's that many, I'll paste the link in and pin it. Yeah, get signed up for that. If I can give Facebook time to catch up, it's crazy busy tonight. Pin. Done. Right, uh, loads and loads of more comments. Uh, revision sessions, revision sessions, sign up for revision sessions. Uh, yeah, spreadsheets, no synoptic window. ECDL level two, might be exemption. Yeah, check, we'll check with AAT. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, that's correct. Right, written parts again. Jill, that's a very good question actually. Wait a minute, just have a cup of tea. Like a chair, like a window mug, or make me laugh. Although, Helen's gonna take some bean. I'm gonna give three out tonight. Three out tonight because Emily posts them and she likes she... <laughs> The postman sees her nearly every other day with that generous. Um, all right, written parts. You've got 1.1, 1 1.2, they've not changed. 1.3 is the new written task on mandatory units. So you might have to explain 
like an NPV. So don't say, just say, you know, give me a load of numbers. It's the fact that an NPV takes account of like discounted fa uh, cash flows in the future because of, you know, the value of time or, you know, a, a bad debt. Well, you know, don't just tell me how, what the bad debt provision is. Say, you know, go through the procedure of taking off specific bad debts and, you know, it would offset your sales edge control to show a more realistic figure of what you're likely to receive kind of thing. Um, anyway. So there's, that's 1.3. Then you've got 1.4, which is the old style question. Now, what you could could do if you're desperate for extra questions is get the go on to AVSY, the one I said don't go on to, uh, which is the old out of date synoptic exam. And if you look at 1.3, it's going to be really, really useful for practicing 1.4, which is a written question on ethics. Uh, so it's things like, you know, explain which funda prin fundamental principle is under threat and what is the threat and what should they do? Or uh, explain the money laundering issues in this scenario kind of thing. So that would be really useful. But you've only got two, 1.3 and 1.4. Then 1.5 and 6 are automatically marked questions on the three uh, mandatory units. Yes, you can buy additional mocks from us, £15 per unit, um, and you get online video debriefs of um, one of our mocks and two mocks uh, that you can do. And with the written questions, you get guidance on how to mark them. You mark them yourself, be honest, and put your mark in and it'll give you an overall percentage taken into account your written things, which AAT sample assessments uh, don't do. Uh, if you're a first intuition online, online live student, don't buy them. You've already got them and you're throwing away £15. Uh, what else have we got? Lloyd Brown says they helped massively the mocks. Oh, Mon Monia, uh, you get two attempts at every mock. And to be honest, if you email me and ask for another, I'm going to give you it. Um, really? What else have we got? Yeah, revision session, revision. I've posted it twice. It's that good. Uh, an unbalanced sheet. Uh, what did the overwork asset say to the other asset? I feel so underappreciated. Cool. Right, I have... I've made my short list. You've got a couple more minutes now to ask a irrelevant question or make me laugh, and I will be giving out my three mugs. But cool. But cool, yeah, make sure you sign up for revision sessions because you know, they're free, open to everyone, and the roll on, roll off. So don't think, oh, I've missed out of it because you haven't. We just basically, I do, main, I'm doing a lot of AVK at the moment. So I start at one point, what, uh, task one, do two, three, four, five, and then start again at one, two, three. You, See what I mean? So you haven't missed anything. And if you want some free stuff, check out our YouTube channel. There's all the playlists from the old ones uh, that you can watch as well. You know, what's not to love? Free. Really. Laurie, you can calm down now. You are on my short list. Cool. Right. Remember, uh, last chance to ask. Uh, last chance for me to do a plug. Remember, we've got twenty percent off our online, online live, whole level um, bookkeeping and single unit courses. You can pay in interest for installments. We've got our revision sessions that are free. We've got a mock product at fifteen pound. Um, what else can I plug? Uh, loads of stuff. Um, any questions or queries? Drop me an email, nickcrags@fi.co.uk. Uh, Uche, very good question. Actually, very good question. Um, if you're a first intuition student who bought your books a year ago, um, say, obviously AT have changed it and your books will be out of date. You don't need new books, I promise you. The course notes, what you need to know for ethics and spreadsheets has not changed. The question bank testing you on the five principles has not changed, that's fine. The exam format has changed. So your task bank and your mock bank is out of date. But us being us, we're nice guys and girls. Uh, we've already emailed anyone who's we sold a course to in the last couple of years. Um, all our self-study students, they got sent updated materials electronically. All our online students and online live students have got updated material, uh, just a task bank and mock bank. So if you if you bought a book off us years ago, uh, drop us an email and we'll give you the PDFs of the things that you need to know for free if you're a first intuition student. Uh, use of optic revision guide available. Um, no, there's not a great deal of stuff available for the new synoptic exam on the AT Greenlights test, uh, on the AT learning platform. 
uh, something like that. Um, yeah, Kirsty, make sure you sign up for this. Right, this is this. This I'm going to announce it. So, uh, Laurie Brown, Becky Sobol, and Helen Truman. Helen Truman's a winner. That's a cracker. Is that I'm, st I'm stealing that? Drop me an e well. Drop me an email uh, at nickcrags at fi.co.uk or aat at fi.co.uk. Get them both, and um, someone will sort you out with a mug. Um, if you don't like our page, why not? We've got loads planning, uh, planned, going to go. We've got our 80 Festival, just done that. We've got some Christmas events. First Intuition Hood is about to put an order in, therefore I've got a lot of spare one for a prize. Uh, so make sure you like our page and don't miss out on things like that because, you know, who wouldn't want to get a First Intuition Hoodie? Cool, right. I um, hope that was useful. I uh, hope you uh, took something away. If not, had a laugh at uh, some jokes. Um, and I'll see you at some point in some revision session Monday night if it's AVBK and FAPR.